Election Day 2023. Did you get out and vote? Well, whether you did or not, many people did, and the results were surprising in a number of ways. You may have heard the results analyzed by many talking heads by the time this show airs, so we're not going to be just another one doing that. Instead, this week, Something's Happening Here will look at key takeaways from the election to launch into a deep dive of Daniel chapter 11, which tells us what to expect going forward from here. So put on your prophecy hats all week long, friends, and keep those Bibles nearby. I'm Steve Hicks, Director of Podcast Ministries for Talking Donkey International. Today's show is titled after a reference I'm sure exactly none of you will get, but I couldn't help it. Welcome to I Took My Tie From The Dumpster. All right, welcome back for another exciting week of Something's Happening Here, and uh, we're going to spend a lot of time in prophecy this week. So as I mentioned in the opener, you definitely want to have that prophecy hat on and be thinking spiritually minded stuff all week long. Uh, Make sure your Bible is handy and we're going to have a good time. Now, before we get to it, the big announcement from Talking Donkey International is that we have a new website and that really simplifies the the all the subscription stuff that we have to do because I'm pointing you to one website, okay? tdimedia.org. And that is going to give you access to, um, well, eventually it'll give you the entire archive of all three seasons of the show. It's still under construction, so be patient with us. But we wanted to get it out to you as soon as we could. So definitely check that out. Probably for this week, I'll still go through all the social media um, just while we're making that transition. But definitely go to tdimedia.org and check out the work we've been doing. Now, let's get to it, shall we? Uh, We had an election in America, and it was uh, last week. By the time you see this show, it was uh, Election Day 2023. And what I want to do today is go through kind of the highlights of it, just in case you are not aware, maybe you weren't following it. So we want to know what happened, and I'll comment on that a little bit, but mostly we're using it as a launching point to then discuss Daniel chapter 11 tomorrow and Wednesday and Thursday with a conclusion on Friday. So that's the week in a nutshell. And we will start in Fox News. Okay, Uh, Fox News asks, who were the biggest winners on Election Day 2023? And so we should just recognize from the beginning that there were winners and losers, as there always are in elections. But sometimes there's one dominant winner, you know, like this was the Republican victory. or This was the Democrat victory. Last week's election was more of a mixed bag than that. Both parties had good wins that they were counting on and and hoping for. But as we're about to read from Fox News, there was, you know, one side definitely had a more dominant victory. So how did it go, Fox News? The sub headline is Democrats came out on top in a majority of the most closely watched races Tuesday. Let's see what happened. Democrats across the country saw significant victories on election night and came out on top as the big winners in a number of races that Republicans hoped to use as a springboard into the 2024 elections. A couple paragraphs down, it says, Democrat Kentucky Governor Andy Beshear, I don't know how to say that exactly, so my apologies, But this guy won one of the most notable victories of the night, defeating his Republican opponent, State Attorney General Daniel Cameron, in a race that many thought was achievable for the GOP, considering the deep red state's conservative roots. But why didn't it work? Well, probably for a number of reasons, of course. All of these are complex issues. But Fox tells us, two paragraphs underneath that, Trump's popularity among Kentuckians fell short of Beshears or Beshars who maintained his status as one of the most popular governors in the country in the months leading up to the election. That's relevant because um, Trump endorsed the other guy, the Republican candidate, um, pretty heavily. And I understand that that guy used Trump's endorsement heavily in his campaign. So Fox is telling us that um, Trump's popularity added to the Republicans candidate was not enough to overcome the Democrats popularity among the people. Uh, with his victory, Governor Bashar Bashir is one of only three remaining Democrat governors leading a red state. And then we learn about in Mississippi, incumbent Governor 
incumbent Republican Governor Tate Reeves fended off a formidable challenge from Democrat Brandon Presley, a former mayor and Mississippi Public Service Commission member who is also the second cousin to famed rock and roll legend Elvis Presley. All right. So that was a Republican victory there. And there's some commentary about the influx of Democratic money. Um, and we're going to clo- close here. Democrats in Virginia also had something to celebrate Tuesday as they won control of the House of Delegates from Republicans and beat back GOP efforts to flip the state Senate red from the narrow Democrat majority that currently controls the chamber. So it was not a good day for Republicans in Virginia. So that's kind of an overview that's not obviously a an exhaustive overview. And the article is going to be in the show notes for you to review on your own time, as always. But I also now want to jump to the Washington Examiner for another piece of this puzzle. Now, this is an opinion piece. OK, this this is not pretending to be a news piece. It's an opinion piece. The title is Huge Night for the Party of Abortion, Marijuana and Pornography. And so I I picked this article um, primarily because it tells us what happened in Ohio, but also I picked it specifically because of that inflammatory headline. Uh, Obviously, the Democratic Party stands for other things too, but I don't think I'm too much of a partisan when I look at the, the various kind of party platform positions and ways, the things that are advocated by the elected representatives um, in the Democrat Party, I don't think I'm too much of a partisan to agree with this headline. I'm, you know, in the under the guise of personal autonomy, the Democrats really do push abortion, like your life is valuable, but the baby's is not. And they push really like increasingly decriminalizing all sorts of drugs. But, you know, marijuana was the way that 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 issue entered into the consciousness and pornography that's referring to um, one of the candidates in Virginia who was a woman who um, earned a side side hustle by having sex with her husband online for money. And um, at the time that this article was written, that race was still undecided and she was in the lead, although subsequently she lost the race. So she will not be an elected representative, but Anyway, so what happened in Ohio? The Democratic Party had a huge night Tuesday holding on to the governor's mansion in Kentucky and the Senate in Virginia, which we already talked about, while also managing to flip the Virginia House, which we already talked about. The Democrats' biggest wins, however, came in the, and this is subjective, I mean, it's the biggest wins according to the the author of this article, but um, she claims, or let's see, Yeah, I don't know if uh, a man or woman wrote this article, but the author claims that the biggest wins were in Ohio um, from two ballot measures there, where one measure added a right to abortion to the Ohio Constitution and another measure legalized marijuana in the state. The margins on both ballot measures were not close, with both abortion and marijuana winning by double digits. So yikes, right? Yikes. (laughs) What happened there? Now, if you are watching this show and you are um, an advocate of either or both of those things, like maybe you think abortion is healthcare, right? Women's healthcare. And maybe you think that marijuana should be decriminalized because calling it a class one narcotic is ridiculous. Like whatever. I'm not saying these are clear cut issues. Maybe you actually, you know, hold the Democratic Party line on these issues. I simply do not particularly about the abortion one. So if you have the kind of traditional Christian understanding of abortion, which goes all the way back to the D to K, um, which is contemporary, contemporary writing to the actual Bible. um, It is very plainly stated there in that first generation of Christians that you shall not have an abortion. It's listed in that writing as a grave evil. So if you if you have that traditional Christian point of view, then you're looking at Ohio, which has been traditionally like a a pretty solidly red conservative Republican state. And you're saying, what in the world just happened? (laughs) How did this happen in Ohio, of all places? 
Well, that is a lot of what we're going to be talking about over the next few days, because Daniel 11 helps us gain God's perspective on the kind of spiritual undercurrents of these kind of big issues, these big societal issues and movements and problems. And so, yeah, we're we're going to be finding out a lot of the whys from that perspective, that prophetic perspective. But also, that brings us to our scripture of the day, which again is a launching point idea for the rest of the week. But I'm taking us to 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 today. Because in that book, which is written by Paul, he makes a statement related to the idea that when you refuse to love the things of God, God gives you something else to love instead, and right? <laughs> something, something not of God to love. And so we find this in, the argument starts in verse 9, and it's talking about the coming of a lawless one, which is a different subject. Um, but then verse 10, in the context of the coming of this wicked one, it says, with all unrighteous deception among those who perish, right? So the wicked one is coming to fool and further deceive those who are not in a saving relationship with Jesus Christ. They are the ones who are going to perish, so to speak. I mean, that's harsh language, but when you're not in Christ, then death is the only winner, right? And so now we're talking about that group. Why are they perishing? Why are they receiving all this delusion? And in the middle of verse 10, Paul says, because they did not receive the love of the truth, that they might be saved. <laughs> so God stood in front of them and said, hey, I want to take your death and your sin away and give you eternal life for free. What do you think? And they, either explicitly or implicitly in their hearts somehow, they made the choice that they're not really interested in the things of God. Sorry, not sorry, God, but, you know, go keep your gift to yourself. I got more important things to do. So because they did not receive the love of the truth, verse 11, the main point, for this reason, God will send them strong delusion that they should believe the lie. There you go. See, the Bible operates on the basic premise that in the plane of reality, there's only two categories of things. There's God and not God, right? The things of God and everything else, right? And there's no real middle ground there. There's no compromising with sin. So it's either of God or it's of the devil from a biblical point of view. That's, that's what it's arguing. So when a person makes a choice against the things of God, by default, that person is turning towards and opening him or herself up to the things that are not of God, right? The things of the devil. So God says, all right, you don't want me? Fine. Have something else. Now, I believe that is what's going on in the world today. And we've seen this over and over and over again from the, you know, the overnight phenomenon of Donald Trump turning from a like TV star, cultural star of 40 years that everybody knew and loved and showed up in rap songs to like overnight, he was the embodiment of Hitler and evil and the worst thing in the world and a racist and all those things. And even at the time, I was like, what? Wait, didn't you all love this dude for four decades? Like, where is this coming from? You know, but it was this like spirit that just overtook everybody. Same thing happened with COVID, you know, like we know now several years later, COVID is a nasty bug for those who have underlying health conditions or advanced age. Like it, it is a serious disease, but for the overwhelming majority of people, it's actually not really that big a deal. And so we could have known that at the beginning, some of us pretty much suspected that from the beginning, thinking like, okay, this is a respiratory virus, like every other respiratory virus, right? And yet the whole world went drunk on this idea, like it was the worst thing in the world and it's going to kill everybody based on nothing. And I could go on because I hope that we realize when the society becomes unmoored, unattached from Jesus, from God, 
it's not going to stay unattached. It's going to attach to something. And maybe not you individually, and hopefully not me individually, but our society as a whole has fallen away from God in a really serious way, even in my lifetime. All of last week's show was about that. And when you fall away from God, you fall toward not God. And so there we have it. The world is drunk with a spirit that is not of God. That's where we're going to wrap it for today because these ideas are going to funnel us into Daniel chapter 11. And we're going to have an excellent Bible study for the next three days. And hopefully we're going to come out of that being able to see this, this fractured, intoxicated, kind of really dark moment in time and all of the events that are happening in it. And we're going to see it from God's perspective. It's not going to change what's happening on the ground, but hopefully it will change our minds and our hearts. You want to fall in love with Jesus? I hope so. So come on back for the next few days. Let's pray. Father in heaven, it is a weighty responsibility to be uh, opening your word to Daniel chapter 11 of all things. It's a very um, complex chapter and not well studied or understood by many. So we need your grace and we need your wisdom this week. Please anoint every one of us. Give me your words to speak and give all of the viewers your ears to hear and your mind to understand. We know there has to be something else going on besides what the news tells us and the government tells us. So show us what is truly happening here, Father, and give us grace and knowledge as we open up our hearts to you and our Bibles to Daniel 11. Amen. All right, friends. And so again, the new website I want you to go to is tdimedia.org. Um, but... In the meantime, while we're still finishing that up and because I we're still going to put our show in all the other social media. So we're also on Facebook where you should like the page, YouTube where you should subscribe to the channel and hit your notification bell, Rumble where you follow, hit the follow button for the channel, Locals where you join it for free like Facebook, but I also pray that you will consider becoming a paid supporter. It really helps us out a lot. Like it helps us more than it hurts you to pay for <laughs> And also, um, it, it does gain you access to additional material that I publish weekly. So have a great evening. Thank you so much for joining us. And come on back tomorrow as we start this week's study of Daniel chapter 11. <music>